Hey, welcome back everybody to my drawing corner. Uh, today we're gonna keep moving forward in our figure drawing and we're gonna start uh, doing clothing, all right? And to uh, start doing clothing, I just wanna take a look at some photos uh, for reference and then we'll get to the drawing as well by hand. So, for clothing, a lot of it we're gonna focus on is folds, right? How the clothing folds, the, the uh, creases that it makes and all that kind of thing. And um, a lot of times it may seem random if you haven't thought about it before. And, and a lot of it feels that way, but there are some things that we have that can help us uh, define them and some commonalities that we see in some kinds of folds, just the way clothing acts, that'll kind of help us out. So first two things, I want to keep in mind before we even get into the individual folds is the form underneath being the first thing. And this is why we do all that structure, right? Or we get all those shapes under there and we draw the figure uh, and all that stuff. So we know, you know, where the clothing has to sit on top of. Even when we can't see it, it helps us define the form, you know, in the clothing here. So even if I can't see what's going on here with this leg, you know, knowing the form underneath there helps, okay? So that's going to help do things like define the body here where we can see that, you know, it's going around her kind of leg, thigh, hip area right here. Okay, we're going to know kind of where her body is here. Uh, now, even here, now we know, so this is our limit kind of, right? If we're pulling tight, it's got to be right around there. But obviously over here on this side, it can go over. Okay, so keeping in mind the form underneath is going to be a big, big step. And another thing is points of tension, okay? So tension is kind of where um, the clothing is hanging from or being pulled from, kind of, you know, as gravity kind of works and pulls things down or things are tied up, like right here, you got this little point of tension here, uh, causing a lot of lines right there, specifically a lot of folds, and then these larger folds kind of coming down from there, and a little more over here, right? Then we got more coming back this way. We got a point of tension there. Here we also get a point of tension where her hand is kind of bunched up, this cloth right here. You can see how all this is being pulled over here by the way the dress is kind of wrapped. So it's another point of tension right there, okay? And here we go on this, either by her hand or by where it's folded over right here, we've got this point of tension where all this clothing is kind of hanging down from, right? And even this hip kind of causes a little point of tension here. And you got, you know, the cloth hanging down there. So all those little points of tension, you know, right here, right here, right here, all those points of tension are gonna cause the clothing to react a certain way and to come down from, okay? So once again, the form underneath and the points of tension. Okay, so let's get on to some specific folds now. So the first fold uh, I wanna look at right here is the um, pipe fold. So pipe folds, are when you got these long rounded not really pipe shaped but maybe like half pipes right um these shaped ripples i guess right and this usually happens when you've got a uh, point of tension somewhere up here right so here's our point of tension uh it looks like it's spread out a little bit so it's got to be spread across a bit to let the the um the cloth like, you know, uh, begin to roll a bit. So, and then it's gotta be long enough as well. So long enough to let the uh, cloth ripple and create these rounded kind of, um, you know, shapes here. So here's, you know, like a big pipe right there. And you got these little kind of pipe folds in between there, but this is one big one there. Got another kind of one here. Oh, oh right here actually goes up there and you got that 
Okay, so all these pipe folds. Let's look at this one here. We've got some shorter pipe folds, and the cloth is kind of uneven and bunched up over itself. But these are all kind of pipe folds hanging down here, this little short skirt thing. Another bunch right here. And look at you got this layered on top of each other. You got all these little pipes hanging down. Okay, on this one, we've got some great examples of some uh, pipe folds. As you can see, the cloth kind of hanging way down from up here on her shoulders. And a couple of the points of tension with her hands here. But it's creating these really nice long um, pipes. So a great example of some pipe folds here on this cape. Go back and forth there. Okay, um, looking at this picture, we've obviously got some pipes coming down, right? We got all the tension up here kind of spread out around her waist. And then we've got these pipe folds coming down, but they're just twisted, right? So we got like these twisted pipe folds. So here they start kind of wrapping over each other, right? All coming from this point of tension up there. And you got this one kind of there, right? You can see the pipe kind of rolled over there. This one kind of folded a little flatter down there and flattens out. Um, you know, you, you use these as much as you can to help define and see things. And then... So let's uh, start with sketching the pipes. So for the pipe fold, we're gonna have to have some long kind of point of tension up top here, right? Let's make this more like drapes, I guess. And then you're gonna get the cloth hanging down. Okay, and maybe it's a little more bunched up here, right? that okay so a little bunched up here but then it's pretty much just hanging free falling kind of straight down from there right so you get these rolls that start to form on the bottom and you can just kind of do these rolls back and forth maybe some are bigger maybe some are smaller and you just get these long pipe folds. Something like that, right? Maybe that's, again, like a curtain or something like that. Okay, the next fold I'd like us to look at is called the diaper fold. And this is kind of it right here. Um, it's kind of what you think of, I guess, typically when you see a cape. And you've got two points of tension. So I got a point of tension here, and I got a point of tension here with her hand, and the cloth is hanging between in this kind of um, back and forth kind of thing, right? So you got a big one here, this one here, got a bunch of other little ones there. This kind of back and forth thing. And maybe like the top of like Superman's cape or something like that, All right? Here's another one right here. So here's a diaper to this one over here. Let's go in there. And then you got these ones there and it just keeps going, right? And it kind of spreads out as it gets further. And I know there's little ones in between, but just not focusing on each one, right? You got here. So diaper folds, okay? So we've got two points of tension, say something like that and that, and we got the cloth hanging down. And let's see here. And we're gonna get this kind of back and forth little pattern here. 
maybe over by the time it gets down here it'll uh roll out into some uh pipes maybe and it'll get like tighter up top and then it'll loosen up as it gets further down Maybe on the bottom here. Maybe it curled over there. Maybe here if it uh, curled over and then flared out. That one doesn't look too good. I'm gonna fix that one. There we go. All right, so that's a diaper fold back and forth. All right, the next fold I want to look at is a spiral fold. And this is when you have your cloth maybe a little bit uh, tighter, right? Around like a rounded, um, like her torso here, or like an arm, something rounded part of the body. I guess whatever it is that could have cloth. And you get these little spirals, right? It goes, it goes around kind of the whole shape here. So all these are little spiral folds there, or right, they'll go around. Uh, another example, this isn't the greatest because her arm, uh, her sleeves are a bit loose, but here you can see some spirals kind of there, right? Where, where it's a little more, there's a little more tension up top and then you can see it loosens up here and starts going to this zigzag back and forth thing. But you got some spirals going there a little bit. Maybe a little bit here where it's kind of bunched up, right? Some spirals. Okay, um, looking now at the spiral fold. So let's say we have something like an arm here, right, or part of an arm. So I'm just going to give us uh, a cylinder kind of shape. Okay, and then around it, let's make it kind of like tight. So we're going to have this cloth that makes these spirals around this cylindrical shape or round shape, right? It doesn't have to be a cylinder. Like the example we saw with the uh, torso, right? It's not quite a cylinder, rounded, but... All right, maybe it bunches up a little bit more in spots. Um, joints, right? If you have like an elbow here, maybe it would, maybe it would bunch up more here where the, where the crease is if this was you know, where the elbow was. Maybe it, you know, loosens up in spots. There's not as many spirals and then it kind of gets more bunched up, you know, it can vary, obviously. Maybe it gets a little tight right here with the elbow. And then it starts wrapping back around again. Okay, another fold is this uh, zigzag fold here, where you've got the cloth kind of bunched up, a little bit looser, and it kind of creates this little zigzag pattern back and forth and back and forth, and you can see it really clearly going down her arm and all over the place, really. You get all these zigzags. And obviously a lot of these folds can kind of mix together right and be different things but you know thinking about them um in the way cloth reacts and the consistencies of it kind of helps um come up with this when you need to come up with it on your own specifically right all right zigzags all the way back back and forth Another picture of the same model here. You can see some zigzags back and forth. I'm almost making these diamond shapes. It's so like precise here, right? With these zigzags. Her arm here, back and forth.
kind of hard to do without a object. So let's draw like a, I guess a tube of cloth. All right. So I'm thinking of it like almost like a cylinder again, I guess, right? And we've got this back and forth kind of pattern happening. Right, creating a zigzag, and you can see why it's called zigzag because it's going back and forth. Maybe it wraps around in parts here. All right, not my finest achievement, but trying to get a zigzag pattern. Okay, uh, another fold that is um, maybe one of the trickiest to do without reference is something like the bottom of this dress here, which is an inert fold. So this fold is just where there's really no shape underneath besides maybe the surface it's sitting on, defining it, right? So obviously we have the the dress flowing down from the top and all that's a little different. We see some twisted pipes going there. But on the bottom, you've got this inert fold where the cloth is just bunched up and, you know, it's kind of sitting on itself. And, you know, that's kind of defining the shape of that. Obviously, it's very loose, right? You've got some, like, rolls here. Got areas folded over on top of each other there. And for me, it, it does help to look at something, um, you know, if I'm drawing an inert fold, because it's just so random. And, uh, you know, just and even just grabbing onto, um, looking at some reference and grabbing onto a couple things um, can sometimes really help, just help it um, look a little more realistic, right? Where he defines it a little bit and like, oh, you know, gives it that element of realism, right? So all this stuff here is, an inert fold. Uh, we have another good example of some inert folds down here on the bottom of this picture. A lot more flattened out. You can see some of the cloth like folded over itself here. And around here. All right, and a lot more haphazard. And sometimes for me, that randomness is the harder thing to draw, which again is why I recommend, you know, using a reference for this sort of thing, right? Here it goes. So right here is where it kind of shifts, right? From this point of tension up here where it's hanging down and then it just starts bunching up on itself there. So the inert fold is when you've got it just bunched up, right, on the ground, and there really isn't any shape besides the ground maybe defining it. So it's going to be very random, and lots of things folded over each other. And looking at reference, as I said, is super duper helpful. Kind of just help it look a little more realistic. Let's get some folds. And to me, this is the hardest one by far because you know there's not that shape underneath defining it. Maybe you see like some corners sticking out, right? What's going to happen here? All right, back to this uh, picture here. Uh, this next fold is a half lock. So strange example of it here, but right here in the middle of her 
um, dress here, right on her torso, you got this shift in directions. And I don't know who came up with these names, um, but they've been around for a while. Uh, I've got them from some classical drawing books. But you got this shift in direction in the fold, right? So it's coming down, like the pipe is coming down here, and then it shifts direction over here. And that's a half lock fold. I wish I had another good example of one, but I could not find one. Let me see down here. Maybe a little bit of a half lock right here, kind of like that, right? You get this kind of shift. Um, it's a little more rounded there. Okay, and now to my um, half lock. So let's say I've got point of tension over here. Right, kind of like the diaper, but then it kind of folds over on itself. Let's see if I can get this. And changes kind of angles more abruptly. All right, maybe it bunches up here a little bit. This is ending here. Okay, I want to try that half lock one more time here. Let's see here. Okay, so coming down. And we're changing directions. Like that, something like that. All right, so I mean, it can fold over, it can do other things. I don't know, you know, it's cl it's cloth, all sorts of things. Okay, and I think that's probably good enough to go on and give us some idea of some things to look for, some uh, ways to um, see how the points of tension interact, right? Whether it's spread out, whether you know, it's like two points like this, or whether the tension is created kind of by the tightness of the fabric, or or it's the fabric, or, or you know, the shape underneath and the tightness of the fabric on it, or a looser shape underneath, right? If it folds on top of each other, or if it's just nothing going on at all. Um, hopefully, that gives us some things to look for. When we're drawing our figures. So look out for the next video and we're going to start putting this into practice and draw some models all the way from start gesture drawing to shapes and then to muscles, what we need to, and then the clothing on top, uh, specifically looking at the folds. See you next time.